If you're new to Field Nation and work market and you just can't seem to get any service calls, then this video is for you. My name is Michael and I'm with Field Tech Academy and I help technicians who want to become full-time freelance IT techs. In this video, I'm going to be talking about 10 specific tips to help you get your first few service calls. And if you'll hang around to the end of the video, I'm going to give you 10 bonus tips on what to do once you actually get your first few service calls to maximize your potential for the future. Let's get into it. Think of getting started on Field Nation like starting a business. Most businesses aren't profitable for months or years and many businesses fail. So I wanna give you these tips to help you have the best chance of success. Now, if you're not real familiar with the Field Nation platform, I wanna encourage you, I have a playlist on YouTube that focuses strictly on Field Nation. Go back and watch all those videos. They're gonna give you the most information about Field Nation, how to set up your profile, how to request tickets, all the functional things you're going to need to know that I'm gonna reference in this video. Tip number one, flesh out your profile so that you are attractive to buyers. You want to put in all of your work experience, you wanna put in all the tools you have, all the skill sets that you have, fill out as much of that profile as you can. That will help you be more attractive to buyers. Tip number two, get a background and a drug screening. These things don't have to be done right up front. They're not requirements, but there are certain buyers that are not gonna offer you tickets if you do not have a background screening and a drug screening. You know, and you being new to the platform, you haven't made money on the platform yet, don't really wanna spend money, but this is one of those things you have to think of as an investment in your future. Spend the money that it takes to get those screenings done and it's gonna pay you dividends. Tip number three, for your first 10 to 20 jobs, don't focus on how much money you're going to make. This is the stage at which you are building your performance profile on Field Nation. You should be focused on getting anything you can, regardless of what it pays, regardless of how far away it is. You just need to get tickets that are gonna show up as completed under your profile so that you can get reviews. That leads us to tip number four. Give every buyer a rating for the tickets you do get assigned to you and ask the buyers to give you a rating. You can go so far as to even call the contacts on the ticket and ask them or put messages in the ticket, but do whatever you can to get ratings on those first few tickets and on an ongoing basis. Ratings are gonna be critical to you being attractive to future buyers, future tickets. Tip number five, request everything, even if it has an overlapping date and time. The odds of you being assigned a ticket that has an overlapping date and time at this stage in your journey are very, very slim. So don't hamstring yourself by only bidding on one ticket in every date and time slot. Bid on everything you possibly think that you can do, that you have the skill set for, you have the tools for, and if by some weird chance you do get double booked, then just get into the ticket for both buyers and talk to them and see if one ticket can be moved forward or backwards, or if it genuinely cannot be moved, then I would just talk to the buyer for the second ticket that was assigned to you and say, hey, I already had a job assigned to me a few minutes before yours came in. I apologize, but I cannot make that date and time. And if they won't work with you, then you can say, hey, you know, we'll need to release the ticket. If you communicate with buyers about these situations and you make notes about it, and you're not going to get in trouble with Field Nation or whatever, because they're going to be able to see that ticket A was assigned to you first, ticket B came in second for the same date and time. Tip number six, go for the jobs nobody else wants. They can be jobs that pay too low, that the hours are terrible, such as they're overnight or early morning, or the distance is further than what most people wanna drive. Again, you are in the stage of building your profile and building your business. Don't focus on what you're making, how far it is to drive to the jobs, just get a job, any job. If it means you travel two hours, but you can get that job, then do it. Once you've built your profile up, you'll be able to be more selective and more profitable. But in the initial stages, you have just got to take whatever you can get your hands on. Number seven, introduce yourself to the buyer when you request a job. The buyer's gonna see on your profile that you've never completed a job on Field Nation, but that doesn't mean you don't have experience. You might be a tech that has 10 or 20 years worth of experience. What you wanna do is request that ticket and go into the messages section of that ticket and send the buyer a message and say, hey, this is Bob Smith. I just requested this ticket. I am new to Field Nation, but I have X number of years of experience. I read through your ticket. I understand it. It is well within my skill set. I'm a very 
professional person and I would love to help you with this ticket. And in your message to them, let them know. I will have all of the tools and all of the supplies that you've listed to properly complete this job and I will do everything according to your instructions. They want to know that you're coachable. They want to know that you're going to follow their instructions. Taking those extra steps are going to make you stand out. Even though you may not have a lot of completed jobs, they're going to trust you more and understand that, okay, this guy actually does know what he's doing. Tip number eight, watch your emails and your text messages like a hawk. You want to be in the top 10% to be the first to request every ticket that's out there that you're interested in. And then of course, as soon as you request it, go in and write a message and do an intro about yourself. That way they know you're serious. Tip number nine, if you're fortunate enough that you get a ticket routed to you, those are big deals. You want to get into that ticket and request it as soon as possible. Routed tickets are your shortcut to picking up jobs on Field Nation. All you have to do is be the first person into that ticket to click accept and it is yours. You don't have to bid against other people. You don't have to compete against other people. You just have to be the first to say accept. Of course, make sure you're accepting a job that you can do, that you have the tools for, that you have the supplies for. And finally, tip number 10, be ready to answer the phone. You're going to get calls from buyers from out-of-state numbers. You need to answer those calls. Many buyers will call before they actually click the assign button because they're calling to do vetting questions and they're gonna ask you idiot test questions. They just wanna make sure that they're giving a ticket to somebody that can do it, that does understand things, that speaks intelligently. So don't be offended when they ask you silly, silly questions that you think are beneath you. Be polite, be respectful, and you just might get that job. All right, great. So you finally started getting tickets. Now, what do you do to make sure that you're doing things right so that you can continue to get jobs, so that you can get good ratings? Well, here's 10 bonus tips on what you need to do after you get Get tickets assigned to you. Number one, be responsive to buyers emails, text messages, and phone calls. Buyers want to deal with people that they can communicate with. If you never answer your phone, you never respond to messages, you never respond to emails, you're not going to get future tickets from that buyer. If you're not talking to them, then they're going to get nervous about whether or not you're actually going to show up to the job. They want to be able to talk to you and call you maybe an hour before the job and just to verify, hey, are you on track to show up on time? The follow-up to that is obviously if you are going Going to be late to a job, you need to communicate that as early as possible. Tip number two, when you get your first calls assigned to you, read through those descriptions more than once. Read the entire ticket. Make sure you understand everything. Look for any downloadable attachments that are scopes of work or explanations of the job. By being thorough and by being ready so that when you get to site, you know what's going on, that is going to help you to get a better rating from the buyer. Tip number three, make sure you have all the tools and supplies with you before you go to the job site. When you read through that job description, if you see that there's a tool that you're going to need potentially and you don't have it, you need to go to the store and you need to buy it before you go. If nothing else, leave it in the packaging and if you don't need it, then take it back if you're tight on cash. Buyers don't like it when you leave site when the job is still in process. That's not going to make them happy. Have everything on hand before you go to the job site. Tip number four, make sure your cell phone and your laptop or whatever devices you're taking are fully charged before you go to site. Buyers are not going to want to hear, oh, my battery died and I can't do that. Be prepared. So tip number five is take all your chargers. Make sure you've got your phone charger. Make sure you've got your laptop charger. You need to be able to keep in communication and have all the equipment up and running that you need. Have chargers for your drill batteries. Have chargers for your label maker. Have spare batteries. Be prepared. Tip number six, after you get your first job, read through the ticket and make sure you understand the check-in, check-out process, and the deliverables process. Deliverables being what things does the buyer want to be able to approve the ticket? What photos do they want? What notes do they want? What close codes do they want? What questions do they want answered? You need to read through all of the ticket to make sure you know exactly what this buyer wants and every buyer is different. Over your first 20 tickets, there's probably going to be 20 different processes for closing the ticket. So it's up to you to be flexible and quick to learn each ticket's procedure. Tip number seven, complete the job with excellence and a good attitude. You can do a great job, but be a total brat to deal with, and the buyers aren't going to want to deal with you, and they're not going to give you good ratings. So keep your attitude positive and do the work to the absolute best of your ability. Remember, you are building the foundation with your ratings and your interaction with that buyer that is going to set the tone for your future experience on Field Nation. Number eight, be coachable. If the buyer or your tech support for that ticket asks you to do something, then do it the way they want it. 
it. A lot of these guys are reading scripts or they have a specific process that they work through. Even though you know that the questions they're asking you aren't applicable and it's like, man, I know it's not step A or B, it's step D, E, or F. Let them work through their process. Don't be argumentative. You basically need to let them eliminate the possibilities so that they're on the same page with you and knowing, okay, well, it's not this. Now we can move on to looking at what is it really. Number nine, clean up your work area, dispose of all your trash, get rid of boxes, and then tidy up all your cables. Make everything look nice and neat. Use Velcro on the cables. Make sure all your screws are in. Make sure things are turned correctly and not out of alignment. Then take your pictures. And finally, tip number 10, make thorough notes throughout the process. Have a work order on a clipboard or have a tablet with a PDF that you can edit and make notes all through the process of who did you talk to at tech support? What kinds of things did you troubleshoot? You need to be able to summarize all of the steps that you took so you can enter them in the Field Nation closeout notes so you show a history of what was done. Then you need to take a lot of photos. Take photos of everything you worked on. Take different angles. Take pictures of the serial numbers of all the equipment. And remember to take before photos to show the difference between when you got there and when you left. That way you have lots of photos to upload to the ticket as well as being sure that you've got the specific documents and photos that the buyer wants. If you can follow these 10 general principles for every ticket that you do, then you're going to have a much higher likelihood of getting a great rating on Field Nation, building up a solid foundation to build off of. This is my whole goal with Field Tech Academy, is to equip you with the knowledge so that you can go out there and become successful as a freelance IT tech. If you got value today, please like the video and subscribe to the channel so that you're alerted when I release new videos. And be sure to visit our website at fieldtechacademy.com. I have several downloads available for purchase that can also help help you in your quest to become a freelance IT tech. And I also offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. As always, let's get you out in the field making money. I'll see you in the next video.